know this is a pretty brief whirlwind tour, but I'm hoping it's planting some ideas. And that is uh, something that's Im Im immensely powerful and wonderful, and that is story maps. I know you've heard a lot about story maps. Many of you are in the T3G community creating story maps. Uh, it seems like a new one's coming out from the community uh, just about on a daily basis, and indeed from the global, com global community uh, just about on the hourly basis. It's just a, it's been an amazing thing uh, to witness. So creating and using uh, story maps. A couple of notes before we uh, actually get into the nuts and bolts of, of showing you how you might create one of these. Well, uh, I think it's, it's very much tied to the whole idea that maps have always been used, right, to tell stories. For thousands of years, people have been telling uh, powerful and compelling stories with, with maps. And story maps, that, uh, that term, is a bit of a general term. People use it for some other things, like from the New York Times and some other publishers that are using a variety of different platforms. There is something called the S3 Story Maps um, tool set or, or functions or uh, tool, tool kit. Uh, it's based on ArcGIS Online, just like S3 Maps for Office. So it's all part of this ArcGIS uh, platform. Um, and again, the reason why we think they're uh, really uh, uh, quite uh, excellent to include is that uh, just like sto maps in general, they're really powerful, compelling. They're relatively easy to create um, in brackets, and I'll explain more about what I mean uh, in a bit. Definitely getting easier and easier as time goes on, just like anything uh, in the uh, geospatial technology world. But they're accessible. They can be looked at on a phone. They can be looked at on a, on a tablet, on a laptop, on a desktop computer. Then they serve many purposes in education and beyond, which I hope to expand on here uh, with you all this evening. Now, there's, uh, educationally, I think there's a lot of ways. I just selected some of my favorite ways, and I think the most important ways. Um, but they're good ways to teach content, right? If it's about energy or, or natural hazards or watersheds, population change, land cover change, ecoregions, et cetera, there are good ways to teach content through these story maps, either through ones that have already been created or ones that you create yourself. Secondly, they provide good ways to teach uh, technical skills, geospatial skills, multimedia skills, because they're using, they're a, they're a multimedia tool. So you're working with photos, you're working with video, you're working with uh, sounds, um, photographs, etc., and other technical skills. Also, um, there are good ways to teach uh, spatial thinking, critical thinking, organizational skills, because you're working with a lot of different files and a lot of different ways. You're getting some of them from the web. You're getting some of them from your own computer, uh, from a USB drive, et cetera. So, oh, gee, where did I put those photos again? Uh, you know, that kind of thing. It's, it forces students to really be good data managers, which I think is one of the most compelling reasons to use them. And also, uh, they provide good ways for you as instructors to as assess your student work, right? They're giving you a URL for their story map. You go out there and say, oh, OK, well, I wanted, I wanted five uh, things in your story map, and I'm going to check, 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 and uh, those are all f all the five things that I wanted are in there. Great. Also, uh, since they really are designed to be a storytelling communication tool, the students are building those communication skills inside uh, the story maps um, work that they're doing, and they're even incorporating a lot of design and art and cartography, which is wonderful too. Now, the best place to begin is this storymaps.esri.com page. So here is the gallery of story maps from the ESRI story maps team, uh, led by Alan Carroll, formerly chief cartographer at National Geographic. And we we're just tickled pink that uh, Alan has chosen to uh, come over to ESRI and share uh, his vision of uh, story maps uh, with, with us and with the world. So there's a whole boatload of uh, story maps in here and growing, as, as I say, by the day. And there's also, I think, to notice out here in the uh, right-hand side, there's also uh, maps by the community. So these are story maps that have been created by non-ESRI uh, story maps team people. And again, as you can just <laughs> see with this one screen, it's a huge, wide variety of topics. Now, I don't want to spend time in the webinar going through all these, but one of my favorites uh, is actually just to demonstrate what we're talking about with the, is the Titanic. Um, there's a Titanic story map that's uh, really quite interesting, and so let's spend about 30 seconds looking at it. So you can kind of get an idea, if you haven't done much with the story maps, what these things can do. So obviously, there's going to be a live web map in the middle here, right, tied to ArcGIS Online. 
there's going to be some sort of frame around every one of these story maps. There may, be, may or may not be a graph. In this particular case, we're looking at these tabs of the first, second, and third class. You can kind of see on the pie chart on the left side that the third class folks, as we all know, uh, fared much less uh, well than the first and second class. Another nice thing about this is that it's got this Esri uh, ocean base map, so you can really see the Grand Banks and then talk to the students about ice flows coming off the Grand Banks. Another thing that's interesting, I think, is that uh, we oftentimes kind of think, at least I did, uh, of these passengers mostly being from North America and from the UK and Ireland. What's really not the case, as you can see here, there are people over here from Lebanon, uh, from Croatia, and you can actually click on each one of these uh, folks to find out. Uh, it's a little grim, but you can find out whether they lived or died, which is probably pretty appealing to uh, uh, secondary school students. Oh, I wonder what this, you know, et cetera. Uh, here in Colorado, we have Molly Brown, who uh, survived and became the unsinkable Molly Brown, and settled in Colorado and did a lot of philanthropy here in the state. So we're very proud of her. And um, anyway, so this is one of the story maps. Uh, it's got a lot of nice content in a short amount of space, not very much text, very simple, but uh, I think quite compelling. 